So I've been keeping an eye on coronavirus data pretty closely and uh, I've been getting the data from John Hopkins University and I've got tabs there for the for the deaths and the recovered and the uh, and the confirmed, so confirmed and recovered. And I've got a little summary table here and I'm graphing the data. And you can see that the graphs is going up fairly linearly. It's been a bit of a sharp rise in the last week or so, but I don't think that's anything to worry about at this stage. It's just a very linear sort of upswing, which is not, not alarming, okay? So, and here we've got the confirmed cases. That's the total number of people who have ever had coronavirus. And that's just going up fairly linear, linearly as well. <laughs> a bit of a tongue twister. And there's the recovered cases. And that's been increasing pretty quickly, but it's fairly linear as well. We're not seeing any exponential growth here in the number of confirmed cases or the number of deaths. That's going up fairly linear, and the deaths is going up fairly linear. So there's no, absolutely nothing to worry about at this stage. Absolutely nothing to worry about. Okay, there's no cause for concern, no, no cause for panic buying or stockpiling massive amounts of food. It's always better to be prepared. Certainly be prepared for two weeks of food or whatever, but uh, not six months of food. I mean, come on. People, are, people, some of the people out there are going pretty crazy and emptying shelves in supermarkets. Uh, so no need for that at this stage anyway. Okay. So as well as the graphs, I'm also maintaining this little, or created this little program to do an animation of the spread of the virus over time. And I'm using the data here from John Hopkins University. And uh, I'll, click, I'll click the start button. You can see it weighing through the dates here. It goes through pretty fast, about 10 days a second. I've only I set the timer to 100 milliseconds, so 10 a second. And you'll see the dots grow around the various places on the map. Okay, and uh, so let's just click that and start. And you can start and stop it at any point. And uh, you'll see right in the last part of the data there, the last two weeks of data or so, it really grew up, blew up in uh, Italy and Milan and also in Iran. There's actually dots everywhere. It's all over Australia, all over the USA, and uh, all through the world, actually. And, um, and don't panic about the size of this dot here. I've only chosen a size of 100 pixels, because if I chose a size, I chose a size of 10 originally, and these dots here weren't even a pixel in size. So uh, that's why I chose that size here. It's not ind indicative that the whole population of China is infected or anything like that. It's just a, a circle size that I chose at random. Okay, so, uh, and, and these are proportional, so if this was, say, 20,000 cases, this circle, uh, these little circles here might be 1,000 case cases each or something like that. Okay, so it's just, just a proportional sort of size circle. I've also got some coming up here next to, next to China. Um, all through the USA, it's all through Australia as well, it's everywhere, pretty well on the map. These little dots, uh, this video might not pick them up, but, um, so anyway, you can reset and start and stop start and stop and you can see things are taking off in China like I said the size of the dots not really it's not indicative that the whole country is infected it's just a random number I chose okay and this is the number of confirmed cases I should do I should do the similar simulations taking off the number of recovered cases and see how the the net value is growing you know confirmed to minus recovered uh, that might be a simulation I do next but anyway so will this code go up on, on github well it is already it's in a private git Will I put it up in a public git? Well, I probably will eventually. I want to do some, publishing on, uh, some polishing on it, get it more polished, add some more features. And I also want to um, uh, make it a project for my students. See if my projects want, students want to do it as a project. So the data's, uh, links to the data is in the description. Links to the map I use is in the description. And, um, and the source code will be on GitHub eventually uh, as a public repo, but not yet because I want to make it a project for my students. That'll probably get me a thousand downvotes, but oh well, that's the way it goes. It's going to be my students have got to come first. Okay. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope that was useful. Oh, and there's certainly nothing to, and there's certainly no no need to panic at this stage. Everything's growing, like I said in the graphs. Everything's just growing nice and linearly. There's no exponential growth, so at this stage, everything's fine. No need to panic.